another subject. Whoops, oh dear, I was scared. Uh, Charles is my cat, and um, my friend Catherine McDonald, who is a theology doctoral student at University of Ottawa, uh, created the Charles website on Facebook. And uh, I'm not sure just how long it was up, four or five months. And we had just an enormous amount of fun with it. We uh, um, joined him up with several groups and uh, he would make postings um, on, the, on the walls of the groups. Um, always very serious, trying to take part in, in whatever the, you know, the dialogue that was going on. It seemed, I, you know, I've had my suspicion as to what happened as somebody complained about him, obviously. And then, and then he was just erased. Um, Catherine found out who to complain to and got back this form notice saying um, some of the effect of uh, impersonating anyone is against faith, Facebook rules and uh, this decision is final. So we then took it to the next step. Uh, Catherine argued that Charles wasn't impersonating, any, impersonating anyone. Uh, he was a cat, and uh, and his his Facebook name was Charles Cat. He had his own email address, Charles Charles is a cat at gmail dot com. So Catherine appealed and said, you know, he's not impersonating anyone. He's he's a cat, and we got back uh, um, a message from whoever the appeals court of Facebook saying that it's against the rules to impersonate anyone, including a cat. And um, at that point, and, and they wouldn't give us back uh, the, the names of the friends. They wouldn't give them, Catherine had created a profile for him. Uh, they wouldn't give us back any of that. And, um, and I, the message from the Facebook uh, appeals judge said, I, you know, I hope you'll understand this. So here is, if, if Facebook doesn't like what you're saying, they can just terminate your communications. And I think this is a, this is a whole new world. Um, it fascinates me. It fascinates me that, um, you know, people are abandoning email and won't use email any longer. They, they communicate um, solely via Facebook. I, I live, when I'm in Toronto, uh, this is my ex-wife's house, uh, who now, and Charles moves back and forth, but I live at a, at a graduate uh, college at the University of Toronto. And even people, you know, doing their doctorates and master's degree, they communicate only by Facebook. Uh, I don't understand, I do understand its attraction. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a virtual community and you get to see what everybody is doing during the day and what their feelings are like, what groups are joining. I mean, it's tremendously addictive. Um, do you think, do you feel that when Charles's account was reviewed and shut down, that in that sense, um, his, his privacy as a user was infringed? Oh yeah, yeah, of course. Now, the question would then be, yeah, you know, who owns who owns the, the the airwaves as it as it is with Facebook? I mean, is it uh, is it public or private? Um, I mean, we had this huge debate in Canada in the nineteen twenties and the thirties that led the government to conclude that the the airwaves were public, uh, and now we're getting into a privatization where communication is being privatized, is privatized in fact, because, you know, I forget what uh, Microsoft paid. I know where the figure seven or eight comes from. Microsoft paid. 240 million. Yeah, for. For uh, like 1.6%. Exactly, See, so do the arithmetic as to what that works out to. 15 billion. Is, yeah, is that's amazing, that's astonishing. That's astonishing. I mean, this is, but this is our world. 